This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Sunside. But before that, this video is brought to you by Mark DuPont and Andre Yokoma. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Sunside map can be found at the FarmingSimulator.com site or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you a little bit of the description. Welcome to the map, Sunside. This map contains three farmyards, 63 fields, eight forest areas, one biogas plant, 11 points of sale, six productions, one large building site, a merchant livestock dealer, two gas stations, and a wash station. All animals are present on the map. Purchase points for seed, lime, and fertilizer. And this map is precision farming ready. This map also includes nine required mods. So let's go ahead and take a look at those required mods. We are going to be using the cow shed three plus zero, as well as the farmhouse. We have the house. We have a lime factory, outdoor climate pigsty, as well as the restaurant sawmill, slatted cow shed, and the wind turbine package. So in addition to those required mods, we are also going to be making use of the mods we typically use we take a look at maps, that is additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, which is a new one, as well as field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. I will tell you, if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that the farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farmer mode. In addition, in all play modes, you do start out with the same starting machinery. The only difference is you do not own any land in those alternate play modes. And of course, your bank balance has been adjusted. When we load in for the very first time on this map, we load in kind of to the center here in town. And then our main vehicle dealer is right down the street. Let me just go ahead and quickly kind of stroll over to there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA itself. This is a standard size map. Go ahead and take a look at our lands area. You'll see we start by owning farmland ID 1, 2, 63, which is the main starting farm, and farmland ID 40. In addition to that, we have farmland ID 64, which is a secondary farm that is for horses. That can be bought for $112,000. We also have a tertiary farmland here, farmland 65. This is going to be a farm with pigs, sheep, cows, and chickens. Pretty place. That can be bought for $384,000. In any alternate play mode, you can buy Farmland ID 63 for $258,000. In addition, we do have a BGA here at Farmland ID 66 for $434,000. And it should be noted that when you do buy the BGA land, you do not actually buy the biogas plant itself. You will have to purchase that separately. As far as our crops go, we do have all the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22. We also have the additional premium edition crops in red beets, carrots, and parsnips, as well as a custom crop in field grass. Go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included, then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? Let's go ahead and take a look then at our field calculator screen, which is a companion to the farmland lease screen. And this is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. Then we can cross reference the field numbers with the farmland ID numbers on the previous screen, then to get an idea of how much it's going to cost to buy any one particular field. Taking a look at our crop counter, we do have the standard base game crop counter that is available to us in Farm Sim 22. 
And as we take a look down through our prices screen, you will see we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us once again in FS22, as well as our eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. Continuing down through the base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items. We also do have the ability to buy bulk lime. And we do have the way of getting rid of our stones at two different locations, the lime factory and the restaurant. And what you are going to see is the restaurant, interesting enough, is going to be also a place where you're going to be able to sell all of your premium, it's not premium, platinum expansion production items. I'm going to be stumbling over that for quite a long time. Premium and platinum, well, I'm going to get them mixed up in my head every single day. We also have the premium production items here that we can sell at several sell points, as well as our new premium crops. You can also sell those without any issue whatsoever. Taking a look at our vehicle overview, we own all of our machinery. None of it is leased. We do have a chicken coop and a cow pasture at our main starting farm. We do have contracts available. We do own three large greenhouses also at the start. And while this map says that there are 12 collectibles, I could not find them. I even entered the console command to show all collectibles on the map and nothing showed up. So I'm not really sure if the collectibles are properly coded on the map or not, but it says we have 12. But again, 12 did not show up when I entered the console command, telling them all to put their little dots on the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the Vulture N175 and Fent Vario 314 small tractors. We have the Dudes for Topliner 4090H Harvester. That's paired up with the 4090H Grain Header, as well as the 4090H Header Trailer. We have our Kloss Karat 140TD Trailer. We have the Agrimaz POV5 XL Plow. We have the Samgard 9500K Cultivator as well as the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 Cedar and Power Harrow combination. We have the Hardy Mega 1200L Sprayer, as well as the Amazon ZA TS3200 Fertilize Spreader. We have the Hauer XB150 front loader arms, and for the front loader arms, we have the pallet fork, and that is basically going to be our starting fleet. Taking a look at our mods and DLCs, you will see that we do not have any custom vehicles or implements that are part of this map. Now, at this point, I would typically tab over to the starting farm since we are not starting at the starting farm. But you may notice all of our starting machinery is here within the Kloss dealership. So we do not actually have any starting machinery at the main starting farm itself. But the main starting farm is just down the road from our dealership. So we might as well just take a little quick jog down the street. Right by our dealership, we do have a large buildable area. And then right around the bend, we have our starting farm. Now, what's interesting about the main starting farm is while we have a farmhouse that is pre-placed here, a couple things of note. One. We cannot sell it. And two, these triggers are not functional. So you see we have our explanation trigger. Typically one of these would be a sleep trigger and the other would be a wardrobe trigger. But as you can see, these are completely unfunctional. So I believe the lack of function in the triggers and the fact that we can't sell this farmhouse are somehow tied together. Hopefully this map will see a quick update that will correct the issues here with the farmhouse itself. Now, while we cannot sell the farmhouse, what we can do is we can get rid of everything else. So everything that you're gonna see here at the starting farm can be sold or removed is in with respect to the fence here in behind. So we have one, two, and three of our base game greenhouses. We have our fuel storage. Here we have our cow barn. So we have our slurry point. 
We have our food and a straw point. We have our animal drop off point for 80 cows. And then we have our milk trigger. We do have two pull through silage bunkers. We have our base game grain silo with our dump and fill points. We've got some machine storage over here along this side of the farm. And then we have our chicken coop just up from that. So our food drop off. We have our animal trigger. 360 chickens in this particular facility. And that is the main starting farm. Well, let me jump back because I failed to have shown you all the precision farming soil map. This map is making use of the generic soil map. So let's see how the generic soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod maps out to these fields. With respect to the fields that we do own at the start, we have a fair bit of loamy sand, sandy loam, and loam here on fields one and two. Field 40 is primarily loam, a little bit of sandy loam as well. And you can use this to get a general idea of where other quality soil is gonna be located with respect to how you might wanna buy the fields on this particular map. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of altitude and take a quick look around. Right now we are basically facing north. You will see that we do have windmills in the fields. So I did buy a few fields in my testing and I was able to sell, I was able to sell the windmills that were in those two fields once I purchased the fields. So if you don't want the windmills there, if you wanna get rid of those because you wanna have more of a complete lay of the land, then you can sell those and then kind of do some terraforming Maybe get rid of a couple trees and shrubs that are around those and then have full access to the entirety of the land. In addition, there is at least one field where we do have power lines crossing through the field. Those utility poles do have collisions. So be aware if you do have a field with utility poles, it most likely will have collisions and your helpers and yourself are going to need to work around those. Overall, this map is predominantly flat, but it is not entirely flat. I would say any subtle hills are going to be that, just subtle. And you shouldn't have too much problems with respect to running machinery a little bit below the horsepower ratings uh, on these particular fields. So we're here to the north east of the map. We do have the secondary farm. This is a horse farm small horse farm complex and unlike the main starting farm we can sell the farmhouse here at this particular facility so we continue to make our way around the north you can see that large open placeable area right behind right beside the vehicle shop and you see how flat the map is predominantly because we can look all the way across the map at this angle and this altitude. We have our animal dealer below there, and then we have a fuel station just past that. Now this map has 12 productions built in. While the description said six, they don't seem to also include the greenhouses because we have three large greenhouses pre-placed at the main starting farm. There are two medium greenhouses that are also placed at another farm area. We then have a spinnery, tailor, grain mill, dairy, sawmill. The lime factory is also a biomass production and the biogas plant itself. With respect to our scoring metrics, we are going to be giving a map a full point 
with respect to having production built in or areas set aside for such. So this is going to be the large farm that we talked about that has sheep, pigs, horses, and chickens. We're also going to be giving the map a full point with respect to the ability to sell all of our basic crops, production items, and animal outputs. It's also really nice to see that we do have the ability to sell our platinum expansion production items, even though it is at the restaurant. It's kind of interesting there, but at any rate. And we also have the ability to sell our premium expansion production items at many of the various sell points. And I think that's going to be a trend we're going to see with mod maps going forward is that they are going to almost automatically support the premium expansion productions because it seems that Giants has coded in such a way that if you're going to be accepting your grain crops, you're most likely also going to be accepting the new crops and the new productions. Here we have the biogas plant. And while I have already purchased the biogas plant land, I wanted to demonstrate that we will need to have to buy the biogas plant itself. So let's go over here and you can see we do indeed own the biogas plant land. We're going to have to buy the BGA for $1,180,000. And now that we have that, we're going to be able to go into and manage it. If you do want to get rid of the BGA, you can sell the BGA facility itself. This goes away. What does not go away is the large equipment sheds or the large three-sided bunkers. They are going to be remaining. We have what looks like a train transfer station. And we'll go ahead and loop our way back around to the vehicle shop. But we'll grab our Mahindra and do our drive around. So back at the Kloss dealership, we will need to go inside to get to our shop trigger. And let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. We'll see where our vehicles are going to be spawning in at. And again, our starting machinery is inside the dealership. So you will have fun getting that outside this double door. We've got a very large area for our new vehicles and implements to spawn in at, so we shouldn't have any issue with spawning in a large fleet of vehicles here at the shop. Just do note we do have not the narrowest, but we do have a modest opening here to get out of the shop onto the main road. Then we have our maintenance trigger located right here. It is indeed a dealer trigger. So we will be able to customize, sell, repaint, repair, and do all the fun things that we come to expect. I think the way we're going to work this is trying to avoid all these deer is hit the area here in town and to the north and then kind of make our way around the map. So here we have our dairy. Right, we have our interactive icon on the front. We have our dump point and our pallet spawn point here around the back. Here we have our fuel point. We also have a methane 
Bill Point and an electric charging station located over here. And for those of you who are so inclined to clean mach your machinery, well, we've got that also placed there. Let's make our way up here to the animal dealer. It's over here to the left. And here we have our animal dealer buy trigger for our animals itself. And then we have a bale cell trigger also over here at the enema dealer. And it's also going to take our separated manure. Let's just double back real fast into town. Past our fuel point. And then we have the dairy. But we did miss an entrance into our grape processing facility. Sorry, they're not. This is this is not our grape processing. This is most likely our lime point. Sorry. Yes, I saw the building from the other side. I thought it was grape processing, but no. So we have our up point for our stones. We have our interactive icon there. Then we have our lime fill point right here in the pipe. We have a pizzeria cell point located right here. And then a fabled restaurant cell point, the buy everything cell point right next door. So it's rather interesting that this is set up to basically buy literally everything that you could possibly have to sell including the platinum expansion forestry production items. I don't know if I'm supposed to be driving on here, but well, doesn't look like it. It's okay. It's okay. figure a way out. <laughs> we'll figure our way out. Meanwhile, we have located a, a equine area. Help, help. There we go, we found the road. We found the road. All right, here we have the large secondary farm. We have our farmhouse here and our farmhouse has the triggers on the inside. So I really do like these farmhouses where we can go inside. There we have our sleep trigger for that one. So I've gone ahead and bought this farmland. 
we can sell the farmhouse. We can sell everything also here at this farm. The only thing that we do not have the ability to get rid of are these bale stacks, these decorative bale stacks. Now, I'm not really going to take away from the rating because these bale stacks remain because they are kind of off to their side. They're not going to be a huge hindrance with respect to um, being able to customize this if you really want to. So we have our sheep area. We have our food trough. We have our buy point. 65 a sheep. Then we have our wool spawn point over here to the side. Then we have a pigsty. 290 pigs in this building. We have our slurry point. You have your dump point for your food. And there you go. That's all you need. Then we have our slurry point. We have our dump point for our food and straw for this cow area. One hundred and fifty cows in this facility. And then we have our milk pickup. Located right there. Now what we cannot get rid of at this farm is the stone fence that surrounds it the surrounds it. The stone wall, if you will. Uh we're not gonna take points off for that because again the stone wall is pretty far away from like the main building area and it's such a large area I don't think it's going to constrain you whatsoever here we have our grain silo we have two pull through silage bunkers we have our chicken coop a scheme large chicken coop 360 chickens again our food trough then we have a large machine storage, one shed, we have a three bay garage, then we have another three bay garage right there. Larger setup, so plenty of machine storage and implement storage here at this farm as well. loop around so with respect to the farms being customizable we are going to get the map a full point here for all three farms being customizable now while we cannot get rid of the stone wall around this farm and we cannot get rid of the farmhouse at the starting farm the farmhouse is off to the side it's not that big of a deal we still have a pretty large area for you to customize things the same with the stone fencing or stone wall here at the farm we just took a look at and everything at the third farm which is where we are going now can be sold so we are just going to go ahead and give the map a full point on that like i said this is the large building zone and from above right there is some some text here I looked this up in Google and it told me it was a building site. So that's what the brass letters are saying in German. It's basically saying that that is a building site. So our main starting farm over here to our right. And just over this hill is the entrance to the to a third player farm
Then we're drive, and then our drive kind of goes up and over a little hilltop. And then here we are. So again, we do have a farmhouse. We can sell that. We have our grain silo. We have our two medium greenhouses. Three bay garage shed. Well, equipment shed. Then this is our horse pasture. Standard FS22 horse pasture here. So we have the food trough inside. And then we have our horse drop off point. Eight horses in here. And then I saw this. This is interesting. It's just a fenced in area. Uh, there doesn't appear to be a gate anywhere. So I assume this is intended for like just, you know, riding your horses around in a fenced little area, but guess you're supposed to jump into that facility. Now let's take a quick look at our animal food requirements on the map, just to see if there's anything custom here. Everything looks fairly normal. Other uh, than, of course, we have our field grass has been added for our chickens. With the premium expansion, horses are going to now require carrots, parsnips, and red beets. And pigs are going to, in addition to potatoes and sugar beets, you're also going to be able to feed carrots, parsnips, and red beets as well to your pigs. Let's make our way down to the uh, southern part of the map. And while we do that, let's circle back to our scoring. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique. Yes, they are. We have, for the most part, fairly standard FS22 buildings uh, where we do have custom buildings. I have done a little bit of spot checking and they all do appear to be using the new texturing technique to make the walls kind of appear 3D. Fields that has the turbines, the wind turbines, the windmills in it. Again, in the testing that I've done, I have been successful with respect to uh, selling those if you own the land. across the southern part of the map here. We're going to come over to our train transfer silo. Nearly missed the entrance. Nearly missed it. So we have our fill pipe and we have our dump points to store our product into this silo. We have our rent train trigger there. And within we have our dump and fill points for the train itself. Speaking of the train, let's just pause here and uh, let the train pass. Oh my gosh! Oh, I just freaked out. Oh. I temporarily forgot that this was a game. 
the car just got annihilated. That was that was utterly terrifying. I'm sorry, I was I, I gotta recover from that a little bit. Now if Lou was paying attention, you have seen that the new premium crops did spawn in here on the map as kind of default crops planted by the AI. So that is all fully working. Here we have our sawmill. So we have our wood cell trigger and a dump point. We have our wood chip point here. We have our pallet spawn point and our interactive icon. $35,000, pretty, pretty cheap sawmill. in behind the main vehicle shop we have another fuel point then we have a cell point here at the hotel don't be worried this is not the hotel California so we have our hotel there, we have our spinnery, and our supermarket. So here we have our supermarket cell point. Then right in behind that we have the spinnery. We have already looked at this large farm. So we'll just skip over that. And we'll make our way to the south. Pick up the last few areas that we need to take a look at. Oh, these roads are not grippy. These roads are slicker than the F1 race in Las Vegas. just cheat our way over here so we have a bale cell point located right over here and what is we have all right, so Goldcrest Valley is the train cell point. That's what that icon is for.
Now, let's find the right way into here. On our way out. For the railroad tracks. So, apparently the road signs do not have collisions, which is good to see. I like seeing the guard railing here on the corners. And the slick as these roads are, you're gonna need that guard railing to keep from uh, sliding off. So here we have a farmer's market sell point. We have our tailor production. All the uh, appropriate triggers where we expect. And then we have our grain mill. Once again, all the triggers kind of where we expect them to be. on in here and check out the biogas plant and that's probably where we are going to conclude this map tour now our final scoring metric is going to be player and interactive areas being clearly marked i'm going to go ahead and give the map three quarters of a point here i'm taking a quarter point off because we did not have functional sleep trigger or wardrobe trigger at the main starting farm. We had trigger icons for those, but we didn't actually have the triggers functioning. And I appear to have <laughs> lost the entrance into the bag, I plan. So that's gonna give this score, half a score of 4.75 out of five. Like I said, I'd love to see this map get updated and with the update having then the ability to have those two triggers working and that really is all that i am seeing from an initial kind of drive around and look around as far as things that are not quite as they would appear here on the map i like that we do have the ability to pretty much sell everything that we have with respect to farm sim 22. So we have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. We have the ability to sell our premium crops, our premium production, and our platinum production. I think the only thing we couldn't sell was iron ore. And, well, that's something we probably shouldn't be able to sell because, well, we, iron ore just spawns in if you put the iron ore spawn point down. So here we have the biogas plant. Again, we have to buy the BGA, but we have our dump point. We have our dump point for a slurry. Then we have our spawn point for our digestate. We do have an electric charging station also down here at the BGA. You can sell the biogas plant, as I mentioned earlier. These sheds and the three-sided bunkers, they are going to remain no matter what. But if you want to go and build out your own BGA, maybe using pumps and hoses, or one of the modular BGA type, type mods, well, you're going to have plenty of land in order to do that. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this particular map. Sunside is once again available over at the Giants Mod Hub for all platforms. Go ahead, leave a like, and hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started as we start the third year of Farm Sim 22's life. We have taken a look at a ton of maps in the first two years. I can only imagine how many maps we're going to be able to take a look at through the rest of the FS22 run. 
And until next time, happy farming. <laughs>